Hey there guys, welcome to this week's I Can't Witch Without Books. This week's subject was actually requested because they haven't done a video about book recommendations for quite some time. And I thought it would be fun to incorporate it into the I Can't Witch Without series. The I Can't Witch Without series, as always in the beginning, is not things that you must own to be a witch. I I'm cutting that right off. The idea behind the I Can't Witch Without series is things that I regularly use in my practice and I thought we'd actually talk about books as well in a more generalised sense. I've... Actually let's talk before the before the recommendations. So I think books are an integral part of learning and they are a part of learning not the be all and end all and additionally, purchasing books isn't necessary. Especially if you don't have the money, if you're beginning and you're not sure where you were at yet. So the, uh, the ways of getting around knowing what kind of books are for you. Firstly, you can watch recommended videos on people whose path speaks to you in one way or another and you want to investigate. Then you can go to the library, you can go to Google Books Online where they quite often have large excerpts from books that you can read and get a general feel for the book. There are quite frequently free books available on Kindle or online. And additionally, if you go to bookshops, some, quite a lot of them, I know that my local Waterstones had tables and you could just go have a read of a chapter or two and get a general feel for a book before you have to purchase it. And then there are options like charity shops which are usually a lot cheaper and you can usually find something. And if you do want to buy the book you don't have to buy first hand, you can buy second hand off places like Amazon and eBay and things of that nature. So <clears throat> there are levels to which books you purchase or not and how to get a feel of books before you actually purchase them. So why do I enjoy books and why are books a regular part of my witchy practice? Well I think that they're a really good way of learning, of accessing information most of us are familiar with the idea of studying books, th learning through an educational process. The idea of learning from a book seems to be a very popular one and I would caution against taking everything you read from a book as absolute truth. And that's why I'm going to start with this book, which is a book I have been rereading and resonating with. Craft of the Wild Witch by Poppy Palin, Green Spirituality and Natural Enchantment. A lot of this book speaks to me very highly. It, it's right where I am right now and it resonates in a lot of ways. However, in this book they recommend that you don't work with a particular deity. And obviously that's not going to be for me whatsoever. You know, they, they work with spirituality and God or Goddess in the abstract, and I do not. So I can still take lessons from this and enjoy this book, but I don't have to take every single thing it says as true for me, for my path. And people often forget that, you know, books are just what people have written down. <clears throat> So here's what's in the chapter book, chapter one, The Magical Life. Strong roots, lengthening branches, wild landscapes of the soul, off the beaten track, wild enchantments, green willful wishes, into the green beyond. So the strong roots is about celebrating times of the year so there is new moon energy soul song to the new moon energy soul song for the full moon energy soul song for the dark moon energy 
I think it's a lot about esbats and sabbats in that ch particular chapter. There's a discussion at the beginning of path walking, which I really, really enjoy. And then you have things like what it means to be a natural witch in their opinion, and are they a religious for the good of all. And let's skip right back and talk what some of this off the beaten track. I think this might be rituals, yeah, things like uh, meeting spirit guides. So some of this is obviously not basic, but beginner-ish. But it's a different take on things. And I enjoy reading books which are a different take on things. I enjoy the notion of the wild witch. Um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, a wild witch seeks to honour the land on which they live, experiencing life as endless circle dancing of enchantment and devotion, finding magic in the mundane, inspiration in the midst of modern existence. It's very much about connecting to the power of the earth. And I think that sometimes gets lost in witchcraft, which isn't necessarily associated with Wicca. And people sometimes, perhaps, underestimate the importance of living in tune with the cycles of nature, of the earth, of the seasons, of the astral bodies, energies from the astral bodies and things of that nature. And some people sort of disregard it and I personally feel it's a integral part of being a witch is to connect with the earth and nature and the cycles so I really enjoy that book so that's the book I'm rereading right now and for the most part I love it okay so then I thought I'd just pick books which I just regularly use yeah so the first one which you've seen a fair bit of recently is the crystal bibbles uh, I have one and two and I will rebuy three at some point, hopefully in the future. Not for a long while, I don't think, but uh, hopefully in the future. So I enjoy working with crystals as I have said many a time and there have been crystal haul videos out the years and then grids and all sorts. So the crystal bibles are fantastic for crystal reference. They're really well written. Um, they have pictures of each crystal as well as color appearance rarity and source then attributes psychological attributes magical attributes healing attributes uh, the best position to place or carry the crystal and it's they're just fantastic in terms of reference and at the front you have backgrounds talking about formations ones how how they are utilized in different ways different sort of measurements i know in the second one there are grid suggestions as well i don't think there are in the first one so i just grabbed the first one that came to me so for crystal reference that's a really fantastic book and i highly recommend it for herbal books that i highly recommend there are two and Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs as well as a Compendium of Herbal Magic by Paul Bear. I enjoy both of these books and they are fantastic for regular herbal magic workings. Uh, Cunningham is probably the most referency, as in, you know, folk names, gender, planet, element. Deities, powers, ritual uses, and magical uses. So it's a good point of reference. There is a beginner's about how to use it, <clears throat> how to harvest herbs in the beginning. Tools, the altar, visualization, considerations. 
attunements. Uh, what I really enjoy about Cunningham's book is in the back there are, this is doing this one handed which is interesting, so there are not only Herbs Fruits General one, but I th there are herbs for each planetary association, Maybe it's further forward. Yeah, okay. Planetary associations, gender associations, tables and appendices, basically. So there's that. And then the Compendium of Herbal Magic is a bit thicker, a bit more information. Um, it also has the reference style, but it has lore, which I really like. Some, some history and information. Now, I'm not sure if... Um, Oh, they have planetary correspondences at the back, yeah. It talks a lot of, more about these things as well. So working with astrological correspondences, it discusses each... Where's... There you go. Herbs of the Moon. And it discusses it more at length rather than just telling you which... which one's for which. Then it has the correspondences in general, so there you go, there's Neptune and our list. Then it has herbs of Taurus and all the other star signs. And it actually just lists everything and gives you the correspondences at the back. Common names for things. Etc. It also has appropriate herbs for deities. So yeah, I really enjoy that book as well. Um, they those are all correspondence books more than anything. Although you know, it's not like a sit down and and read. You can sit down and read them in certain sections of them anyway, but. Uh, they are correspondence books. So next up is The Witch's Shield by uh, Mr. Pen Penzac, Christopher Penzac. Penzac. <laughs> so this is a book which is well leafed. Uh, Protection Magic and Psychic Self-Defense. This is a book that I would highly recommend that anybody keep in their practice. And it's well worth rereading. Fits very well with last week's theme. And it discusses all sorts of things, including is psychic attack real? Let's just go through this so you can see. It has spells, protection, And discusses it at length. I enjoy most of his books. I did not enjoy his Morrigan book. I thought that was wishy-washy. But every I enjoy his Temple of Witchcraft series very much. And this is probably the one that I would recommend most, most of all his books. It's really enjoyable. It's a good reference book again for going back and sort of re-clarifying your thoughts on protection magic and defense magic and things of that nature. So then there is the Morrigan book that I do recommend, which is Stephanie Woodfield's Celtic Law of the Dark Goddess, Invoking the Morrigan. So this is the Morrigan book which I highly recommend to anybody who asks me right off the bat, uh, looking for information about the Morrigan. A lot of looking for information about the Morrigan is based on personal experience as well as personal research on myths and lore and legends and things of that nature. It's getting involved, but a beautiful place to start is this book. It's just, it's just so good. There's a lot of lore, uh, there's a lot of discussing the goddess in a really positive light. There's elements of the goddess, aspects of the goddess, uh, sort of meeting aspects of the goddess, meditations, and then there's spells and herbs and things, recipes, to get you started 
and each aspect covers a neat different aspect of the goddess so it's fantastic it really really is and I can't I re I reread it quite regularly because it just it helps me reattune to the Morrigan and the enthusiasm that I had right in the very beginning of researching things. It always takes me back to that place. And the last one is the Encyclopedia of Five Thousand Spells by Julie Judica Isles, the ultimate reference book for the magical arts. This is the I think the old cover, and I possibly. She's made a slimmer one, which is the same book, but I think it's not hardcover. This is my books, book stop, doorstop. I also <clears throat> dry flowers in this. <laughs> I also throw it at people's heads, no, not really. Um, this is a fantastic book, all with different spell works in it. It's a good place to read for sort of history of spells, getting spell ideas. It's really fun for, for beginners. And uh, take some of her stuff with a pinch of salt, but like you should with any, because I... Is it this book? It might... It might be this book that talks about Christianity, I'm not sure. Maybe it's not. In the History of Magic? And, you know, some of it is clearly biased in that respect. But the spell section of this book is really good. It covers every range of spells. It's a great big hefty thing. It's great for reading about the history of spells, um, spells that people used to do in times gone by, and then seeing how that's changed, things of that nature. So that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, pop them down below. Many blessings.